Hey, happy Saturday, Sunday, or whatever day it is that you're watching this, friends. So glad. I'm so glad that you could join us today for Church Online. My name's Chad, and I'm honored to be one of the pastors here at C4 Church. And listen, I'm also honored to be bringing God's Word to us today. And those of you who know me know that I would usually come out and start my messages really high energy, maybe laughing, a joke, or a story. Um, but today... Before I get into the message, I want us to all just take a quick minute to just stop, take a deep breath, and zoom out a little bit and, and look at the last four months. I mean, let's just think about this for a minute, right? March, April, May, June, and we're in July right now, but let's just look at how much has gone on in our world in the last four and a half months. How much has life changed, right? I mean, between coronavirus and masks and, and quarantines and, and social distancing and travel bans and riots and protests, I would argue that we've seen more change and unrest in the last four months alone than any other period in history, definitely in the last 50 to 100 years. And listen, the year's only halfway done. And I don't know about you, but I kind of lost track of that for just a moment. The last four months for me, it kind of felt more like four years in many ways. I don't know if you can relate to that. Some of us, for the last four months, have felt like 40 years. You know what I'm talking about? And so as we take a, a quick breath, a quick moment to just breathe, I just want to tell you today that, listen, you're doing great. Wherever you are, I want to speak, I want to grab you and say, you're doing great. Hang in there. Jesus still loves you. He's still on the throne. He's not surprised by any of this. And we're in this thing together. Amen? All right. Now that that's out of the way, today's message is going to be about freedom and control. Freedom and control. And you might be asking yourself, why did Chad put those two things together? Freedom and control. Well, number one is because those two things, I don't think that anyone would argue with me on this. It feels like we've lost quite a bit of in the last four months, haven't we? We've lost a lot of freedom, it feels like, and we've lost quite a bit of control as well. And number two, because when I sat down to define the word freedom, Webster's Dictionary defines it as the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. What does that mean? Basically, the definition of freedom is that we get to do what we want, when we want, how we want. And I realized that we as humans will often equate the word freedom with control, right? We often equate the two. We might think or say, I have true freedom when I have control of the things around me. I feel truly free, right, when I can control the things that are happening to me. You see, we equate the word freedom with the word control. And what happens then is we do anything and everything in our power, right? We can try to control things because we feel like our freedom is being taken from us if we don't. And we'll actually fight, right? We'll fight literally and figuratively for control over the things in our lives. And what's ironic about that, family, is almost always, almost always, this fight for control actually ends up controlling us. And instead of experiencing the freedom that you and I want so badly, we actually end up being stuck in bondage. Let me show you what I mean. If, if you like history, right? If we look back at some of the most powerful leaders and empires in world history, they were all after one thing. They were all after control. They all thought that their way was the best. They, look at Alexander the Great, right? All this ambition to conquer right? The Roman Empire, the Medes, Napoleon Bonaparte. I think the most recent example, probably Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. They were all after controlling things. Why? Because they all wanted power, which they thought would bring freedom. But quick question, how did it work out for all of those people? Right? They literally died. They actually died fighting for control. I would say that the fight for control actually ended up controlling them. And I find that in my own life as well. I fight for control. 
And if I can be honest for just a moment today, family, one of the things that I often try and control the most are these very messages, the things that you see every time that I preach. The, the, the weeks and the days leading up to me giving a sermon are often, oftentimes some of the most stressful for me. I don't talk to people as much. I, I tend to get really short with those around me. I don't sleep well. People have told me I'm not as much fun to be around. Why? Because I want to make sure what I say comes out right. And I want to make sure I studied as much as I possibly could, right? But can I tell you, it sounds good. That sounds responsible. But it's one thing to care and handle the Bible responsibly. And it's a whole different thing to try and control how people are transformed by it. And I can get so caught up, so caught up in a fight to control the outcome that I get consumed by the process. And you might say, Chad, I don't want to control nations, right? I've never been somebody that wants to do that. I don't give many sermons at church. But let me ask you this. Do you fight for freedom and control when it comes to the things inside of your own life? Right? Things like your family, your children, your home, right? your marriage, Others of us are relationships. Do you fight for control in your relationships, your finances, your job, your health? Especially in this season where so much has been restricted, right? So many things have been kind of almost taken from us due to COVID-19. Things like mask or no mask. I mean, why is that such a controversial topic right now? Because we try and control, we try and control what others are doing and we'll post things, right? Come on, Instagrammers. We'll post things. We'll repost things to try and convince other people. Some of us are still staying at home. And we think that that's the best way to what? To control us not getting this virus. And others of us are going out and having a good time. Why? Because that's my right to freedom, right? And you might get upset when the government restricts things. Right? Like they've done recently, things like the mayor, the governor, the president, right? Restricting. But at the end of the day, in all these scenarios, aren't we just fighting for freedom using our own ability? You and I using our own ability, our own strength to control the situation. And so I want to ask, how is that working out for you? Are you really controlling things or has the fight for control begun controlling you, controlling you with things like fear, controlling you with things like worry and anxiety and frustration and exhaustion and anger, right? Are you really experiencing true freedom? You know, when I look at the Bible, one of the first scriptures that comes to my mind when I think about freedom and control is actually found in Genesis chapter 3, the very first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 3. So go ahead and open your Bibles there, Genesis chapter 3. Google it if you have to. Some of you might be a little bit more familiar, and some of us maybe not, and that's fine. But Genesis 3 is known as the fall of man. And let me just set the scene for us a little bit, right? Like God creates man and woman, Adam and Eve. We know them, right? And they're in this perfect paradise, everything they could want perfect relationship with God. They're living in true freedom and relationship with Him. And so Adam and Eve, perfect life, anything they could want, beautiful garden, relationship with God. And that's where we pick up in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. It says this, The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. And one day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden. And we'll stop right there. You see, Satan, the serpent, right? Satan is so crafty and so unassuming. But the question he asks Eve here is huge, you guys. It's huge. See, in asking this question, he actually makes it about freedom. Did God really say you can't? It's almost like he says, wow, Eve. You aren't really that free, are you? And it's interesting that Satan questions 
right? He questions their freedom when, watch this, that's the very thing that God let off with. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, it says that, but the Lord God warned him, Adam, man, right? He says, you may freely eat. Watch that word there, freely. You may freely eat of every tree in the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat of that tree, you're surely to die. See, God gave them freedom. He he started with that. He was protecting them. He knew what was best for them. He had created them. He just wanted what was best for man and for woman. But watch, Satan twisted that. Did God really say you couldn't? God led with freedom and Satan, he led with bondage. And watch what happens next in verse 2. Of course we may eat of the fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the, the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we're not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you'll die. Okay, so it looks and it seems like Eve's still on board, right? She knows she's free to eat of anything except that one tree. But watch how persistent Satan is and see if you can catch, family. See if you can catch how he starts appealing to her loss of control and her loss of freedom. Verse 4 tells us this. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it. And you'll be like God, knowing both good and evil. And he's basically telling her, God is holding something back from you, Eve. He doesn't want you to have complete control, Eve. He doesn't want you to have absolute freedom in this situation. I want to ask you, have you ever felt like that? Maybe some of us are feeling like that way right now. Right? Like you need control over whatever situation it is. Don't listen to God. He's trying to keep something back from you. He's trying to hold you back. And watch what happens in verse six. Says the woman was what? Convinced. She was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and the fruit looked delicious and she watched, wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some and she ate it. And then she gave some to her husband who was with her. And he ate it too. And let's stop there. Because you and I, we might look at that that one verse or those two verses and we would say, what's wrong with that? She saw something that was good. She wanted it, right? And so she reached out and she grabbed it. Pretty simple, right? I mean, good for her. That's independence. That's freedom. That's control. That's ambition. What's wrong with that? She saw it. She wanted it. It was good. She grabbed it. Well, watch watch how that way of doing things worked out for her in the next verse, verse 7. At that moment, their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. And so they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. And I really want us to see today, family, how the fight to control, the fight for freedom ended up controlling Eve, and instead of this awesome thing she thought she was going to get, instead of the wisdom that looked so good, instead of more, and instead of better for her life, she actually ended up being controlled by shame and by guilt, by fear and by worry. I tell you, God didn't give her that. Her own actions did. And it didn't just affect her, it ended up affecting Adam as well. Verse 7 says that they... They felt shame at their nakedness. Not just her, they felt shame. See, our desire for control doesn't just affect us. Oftentimes it affects those around us as well. Just like mine does with my messages, right? Just like the world leaders I mentioned earlier, it didn't just affect them, they affected nations, countries, right? And I want us to, I want to present to us today that to you as well, that maybe yours, maybe your fight for control could be affecting people that you care about as well. And think about that. Who is your desire for control affecting? Can I tell you that I believe there's another way? There's a better way. It's actually a better definition I want to give you today. I want to give us some hope. 
want to give us some true freedom. And earlier I said that we would equate the, and define freedom with the word control. And no fault to us, Adam and Eve did the same thing. It's part of our nature. It's a natural human thing. But, but I think there's a better de definition, and here it is right here. Write this down, that true freedom is found when we trust in and surrender to Jesus. Let me say that again one more time for those in the back that missed it. True freedom is found when we trust in and surrender to Jesus. You say, what, Chad? Freedom is found in surrender? It doesn't sound like it makes any sense. And watch this, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense to natural human thinking. But God says that his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than my thoughts. And the truth of scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, it says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Freedom, true freedom, not temporary freedom where we feel like we have control of things for a little while before the shame and the worry and the anxiety kick in. You know what I'm talking about? But true freedom is found where the Spirit of the Lord is. And listen, you might not be convinced by Scripture. All right, I understand that. You might not hold it as truth. But even then, I would ask you, well, how is your way working out? And how long do you think you can sustain that? How long do you think you can hold on to control that you feel like you have? Family, true Freedom is found when we trust in and surrender to Jesus. And as I bring this message to a close, by, I want to do it by looking at a part of Genesis 3 that I don't think gets talked about as much. It doesn't always get as much publicity as the rest of Genesis chapter 3. We always hear about how Adam and Eve, they, they made the wrong decision, right? They screwed up. We hear about how they got kicked out of the garden but in between those two parts is verse 21, which says this, And the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. See, God cared for them, even though they made the wrong decision, even though they, tied, or they tried to control things on their own. And listen, there, there was repercussions, right? There were a lot of repercussions from that decision, Absolutely, yes. But then it says that he clothed them, right? He cared for them. He loved them. And the next chapter, chapter four, starts with God walking with them, walking with Adam and Eve, watching over them, protecting them, caring for them. And I would venture to say that they found true freedom from their shame when they gave up control and instead trusted in and surrendered to God. And not only did God do all those things for them back then, but, but he's doing it for humans even until this very day. He's been doing it ever since. In fact, he was so committed to you and to me, to humanity, that he sent his son Jesus, the Bible says, to die for us. That whoever, whoever would trust in and surrender to Jesus would have eternal life, would have true freedom. You say, Chad, how do I find that true freedom? How do I find that? I'll tell you, it's, it's a simple step. It's not easy, but it's very simple. It's very simple, but it can be difficult, especially when your nature and mine is to control things. And it's simply this. This is how you find true freedom. You have to choose. Choose to trust in and surrender to Jesus instead of choosing to try and control all of the things in your life by your own wisdom, your own power, your own strength. See, Scripture says it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of God that things happen. And listen, I told you it's an easy, but it's a very tough choice as well, right? Sounds so simple, but it's so hard to do, so hard to surrender control. But can I tell you, family, that that's where we're going to find true freedom. And I want to make this super practical for us this week. For some of you, maybe it's the trust, right? Maybe it's the trust part that you need to focus on. And this week, I want you to simply examine yourself 
by asking this, how, how is trusting in my control working out for me? Maybe that's a simple question you can ask yourself this week. And if you want to get really specific, ask yourself this, how much does what other people say about me affect me? And it could be positive or negative, what they say about me positively or negatively, but how much does it affect me? Because right? that will display where your trust truly lies. If it's in God or if it's in others, if it's in yourself. And others of us today, maybe we have a relationship with Jesus. You say, yeah, Chad, I trust in Jesus. But it's the surrender piece that we need to focus on this week. Maybe there's a relationship or a situation, an emotion or a hardship that we just, you just need to say this week, Jesus, I surrender this to you. I admit that I can't control it on my own. The fight to hold on to it, the fight for control is actually controlling me and I want freedom from it. And this week, if that's you, I, wanna, I want you to ask yourself, am I truly willing to give up doing what I want when I want so that God can be able to do what He wants, when He wants, where He wants, and how He wants inside of your life. And we have, we have the best model, family, we have the best model of this in Jesus, right? If you read scripture, the night before He was about to go to the cross, He was begging His Father if there's any other way, but what does He come to the conclusion? He comes at the end of that whole thing. He comes to the conclusion of surrender. He says, Father, not my will, not my way, but yours be done. And, and that should give us hope today, family. That should make us, that should give us encouragement that, that that's our example, right? And so I'm not sure which one of those people you are. Maybe you need to trust today. Maybe it's a surrender thing for you today. But can I encourage you either way, right? Either way that God is for you. He loves you. He's got great plans for you, right? The Bible says that his thoughts for you and for me outnumber the sand on the beach. Just the next time you go to the beach, think about that. Grab a couple handfuls of sand and think about the fact that his thoughts about you outnumber however much sand there is on the beach. But you and I have got to choose. We've got to choose to trust in and surrender to Jesus. And he'll bring that true freedom that you and I are seeking. Can I pray for us today? Father God, we thank you today that, that you have modeled what trust in and surrender to Jesus truly looks like. God, we thank you that, that true freedom is found, you say, in you. God, I pray this week for those of us that are, that are struggling with trusting you, that are struggling to hold on, to fight for control, and in, in maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's in their family, God, this week, maybe it's in finances, maybe it's dealing with this surge of coronavirus that we're seeing. Father, I pray that they would be able to encounter you in a powerful way this week that would just bring about this supernatural trust. And Father, for others of us, this, Today, I wanna to pray for surrender. I wanna pray for that in my own life as well, God. There's many areas where I need to release to just be able to come before you and say, God, I surrender this to you. And Father, I pray that as we do that, as we trust in and surrender to you in every area of our lives, that, that as we do that, you would bring about true, true freedom, true peace, true forgiveness, true mercy, and true grace inside of my life and inside of the lives of all of my family and friends watching this. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen.